Welcome to this compact echo series. In this lecture series, I will show you all the possible views you can acquire to scan the heart. The heart is truly a fascinating organ and as you can see, there are plenty of views, plenty of modalities you can use to get information out of your loops. But how do you do that? How to even start your journey in echocardiography? Well, first of all, we need to understand all the different cut planes we have and where to actually start. The cut planes are shown quite nicely here in this graphic. In this graphic, you can see that there is a peristernal window, an apical window, a subcoastal window. Those are the windows you will mostly need in your echocardiographic exam. For specific questions, for example, in case of severe aortic regurgitation, you might use the suprasternal window and to even further grade or even better grade aortic stenosis, you might need the right peristernal window. Let's start with the first view you always want to start with in a standardized approach in echocardiography. It's the peristernal long axis view. Why peristernal? Of course, it is in the name. You place the transducer right beside the sternum. The sternum is a bone located over here and you want to be on the left side of the sternum. In case of scanning the heart, you should start really at the clavicle. So touch your patients, try to feel the clavicle and put the transducer, place the transducer directly below the clavicle. If you do that and then just move downwards with the transducer, you simply cannot miss the heart. The mark of the transducer always is located to the right shoulder of the patient. The patient has to be in a left lateral position, then imaging will be easier. So the key points are that personal long axis view mostly in most of the patients, you will get quite a nice image. Sometimes it simply doesn't work that well, for example, in patients with COPD or morbidly obese patients. The patients, as I said, they have to be in a strictly lateral position. If they are not, it's harder to scan. So place them really left laterally and scan as close to the sternum as possible. As I said, the marker always points to the right shoulder. Don't point it cranially. Don't point it to the lateral side, really to the right shoulder. And mostly the view you want to acquire is located in between the second to probably the third intercostal space, but don't be discouraged if it's sometimes in the fifth or even sixth intercostal space that simply can happen and is very, very different in the patients we see. And once more, start really at the clavicle. If you do that, the personal view is relatively easy to acquire. Here you see this nice cut plane of the heart and over here the right ventricle is located, so this is close to the transducer. This is the mark of the transducer. In echocardiography, the marker is always in the right side of the image and he is close to the transducer. And this is your field of view you can acquire. And starting uh, from the top, the first anatomical structure you will see is the right ventricle. Always pay attention to the right ventricle because you can get a lot of information only in this view already about the RV. Then there's the interventricular septum, there is the left ventricle, the mitral valve is a very important valvular structure you already can visualize in a personal long axis view. It, this actually is anteroseptal and this is the posterior lateral wall. So it's not strictly posterior, but the posterior lateral wall. In this view, you already get a lot of information about the aortic valve located over here. There's always the right coronary cusp located towards the right ventricle. And if you differentiate the right coronary cusp from the other cusps, you might already get an idea where regurgitation or a leaflet restriction or probably a prolapse is located. Here's another important structure you will scan in a later stage in this view as well. It's the ascending aorta. And basically that concludes the most important anatomy of the personal long axis view. One tiny structure we have to mention in case of the personal long axis view is the coronary sinus. It will be located over here. You will see it in the next slide. The first view you want to acquire, so the first view of our entire echocardiographic exam is an overview of the peristernal long axis view. So use a lot of depth approximately 
let's say 18, 15, 18, maybe 20 centimeters even to visualize the descending part of the aorta and to differentiate in between there might be a pericardial effusion. The fluid will be located in between the descending aorta and the heart, so in the pericardial sac. If it is outside the aorta, it already hints towards a pearl diffusion. So you already can scan the heart and the lungs in the first view you're acquiring in your entire echocardiographic exam.